Okay, uh, I believe I have only 10 minutes to say. Uh, I won't take much of your time. I know the post-lunch period is the most difficult period to sustain your attention. And this particular uh, presentation is to basically to keep you awake, not so much as a mnemonic device that I'm supposed to look at this one. Uh, my only uh, point I'm going to make in this particular paper is presentation is that I want to uh, present that uh, FOSS, free and open source software, uh, should be looked upon as one of the process innovations. And it's also an institutional innovation, which uh, is not uh, so much talked about, not mentioned in any of the STS literature. And that's what I thought I'd make a presentation on it. And the rest of the presentation, apart from this particular main uh, point I'm making, the rest of the presentation is more or less uh, of an evangel evangelical nature, because uh, I thought if some of you who are not uh, familiar with FOSS, you can have some of the slides and then look at that thing. Question me if you have some time. Now, uh, why I thought I'll present a, a thing on FOSS is that uh, when I looked at uh, your manifesto or even Swaraj uh, manifesto, I thought here is a piece of uh, uh, you know software uh, or a commodity, whatever you call it, service, uh, which fits into the broad aims of uh, your bottoms up innovation, which uh, world over has been recognized, but not so much within India. And probably we need to do uh, some bit of a lobbying to make it happen. And I would even go far to say that one should have a right to choose software, and probably this could be one uh, which fits the bill. So uh, basically, I uh, take some uh, issue with some of the things which has been mentioned yesterday by Anil, Anil Gupta. And I would say that many of them, what he's talking about are inventions, not so much as innovations, because they are still not in the market. And of course, one need to also uh, uh, redefine innovations to include some non-market-based uh, uh, diffusions. Till now, I have not found some such uh, redefinition of innovations. Help do that thing. So uh, I also try to look at software as a commodity so service. And uh, here is what my main argument is that it should be non-technical, not so much non-technological innovation. There's a small mistake on that. So non-technical innovations in software, where I tend to uh, include an organization innovation, which is basically how software is developed, particularly the open source software, and how the marketing is done um, for basically proprietary, but also one should include open source. Now, if you look at uh, the software as a commodity, my uh, argument is that uh, the proprietary software falls somewhere, this market value and monopoly value uh, side, I mean, continuum, rather than a use value. And open source of software, I would uh, say, is more of a use value. And if you look at, again, uh, the differences between open source and proprietary software, proprietary softwares are usually uh, the compiled ones in the binary format, which you cannot reverse engineer and open sources where you, can, you have the source code which you can modify, the, you know, customize, etc. <coughs> I just passed through all that thing. <coughs> okay, uh, what's um, distinct about open source software is, you know, this is actually a, a, a symbolism provided by Raymond where he talks about, you know, uh, proprietary software as being a cathedral-wise, you know, more organized one. And he uses the word to symbolize a open source software, which is uh, amorphous, disjointed kind of a thing. And there has been criticism of this particular use of bazaar. Where he, bazaar is not so much a disorganized one. It also has some institutional aspect. To that. Now, if you, uh, I also uh, want to say that FOSS, involving a huge you know, user community, if not a, uh, I would say, capable expertise users, 
uh, that actually uh, presages uh, what is also known as user-driven innovations and also known as crowdsourcing. These are all the jargons which came later on. And uh, what makes a open source software do that piece of work that has been researched, any number of uh, um, studies have been done, and then they, some of them say that it is the gift economy born out of altruistic motives. And some of them also say that uh, so this, uh, this open source software developers, they participate in, participate in these projects only to prove the skills because otherwise it's not really recognized or otherwise they are um, confined to do a bit of a routine job within the thing. Um, this uh, open source software also uh, attests to one of the important aspects of a software development, that any software development is f ridden with bugs. And uh, in interestingly, the liability of the software engineer is never, uh, you know, pinned as uh, it is for a civil engineer or something who builds a bridge. Now, uh, how do we uh, overcome these bugs? That is to expose the software to as many people as possible. And that's what this Brooks law talks about, inversion of the Brooks. And uh, open source software, again, uh, is, um, you know, has uh, been described as something very unstable and having so many releases, et cetera, et cetera. That has been more or less overcome now with uh, different kinds of releases which they make it. I'll go through that, all that. I don't have much time, right? Okay, I'll come to this thing. How do software, open source software, uh, earns its uh, revenues? It's still now, um, you know, made available free of cost, but uh, whatever the cost recovery that uh, is made available, it is through support and maintenance service. And it's here again, I would, I would like to bring to your notice that what is now known as, you know, the cloud computing in the jargon, it's, uh, it basically undermines this particular aspect about maintenance part of the software because the, it's my thesis that uh, the proprietary software uh, developers, uh, they used to, you know, sell the shrink-wrapped uh, uh, packages and those packages are either uh, uh, pirated or it is, uh, you know, uh, s sold with, uh, you know, higher versions with no backward compatibility and all that thing. So to overcome many of these problems, Google, Microsoft, etc., they wanted to go on to the cloud. It's nothing but a server client based uh, thing. And uh, this used to be called as software on rent earlier. Now they call it as cloud computing. Stallman is supposed to have said it's a stupid thing. Now, uh, there are uh, issues which more or less <coughs> address to that. I will just come to this last one point and then stop it at that. <coughs> Open source software actually, uh, it expects the users to have some expertise in using the uh, applications. Uh, contrasted to a, a proprietary software, which basically dumps you down by the various user interfaces and receiving interfaces. Now, um, my own uh, experience with a lot of students who uh, go through these courses in computer sciences in engineering colleges, various engineering colleges, it tells me that either uh, they have not heard about open source software, or even if they have heard about it, none of them ever tried to do it. So our education system is now uh, making them dumber and dumber uh, day by day. So if uh, you have any plans to uh, advocate open source software as a part of your manifesto, you've got to actually uh, equip the students to think better and do better. That's the last of my slide, yeah, thank you.